is that Hilltop Packs is a small family owned company owned by Belt Ben. I can't talk. Is that Hilltop Packs is a small family owned company. <clears throat> On my back is a new backpack. And it is my second Hilltop Packs Raven. My first being a 45 liter. This time I downsized because I've dialed my gear in to a 40 liter. But let's talk about my new backpack from Hilltop Packs right now. Before I give you a little show and tell on the pack itself, let's talk a little bit about frameless versus framed packs. Now frameless are gonna be ideal for anything probably under 27 pounds, 25 pounds, somewhere in that range. Uh, they are ultra light packs, so they aren't designed to carry ultra heavy loads. Uh, that's just the reality. But I think it's a bit of a myth to say that a frame pack is overall more comfortable. Uh, that may be the case. You may sweat a little less because the frame is going to provide a gap between your back and the pack itself. And uh, it may have some bells and whistles that give you a little bit more shock absorption while you're carrying it. But I have not found that to be the case. And the more experience I get in backpacking, the less likely I, may, I am to ever buy a framed pack again. So you may have noticed I'm not wearing a hip belt right now. And we'll get to that. But it is one of the awesome new features of the Hilltop Raven, a removable hip belt. This particular pack is a 40 liter. And a very important point of how Hilltop does their measurements is the fact that they only measure the main compartment itself. That excludes the mesh pocket and the two side pockets. The Dirty 30 backpack and the Raven backpack both have roll top designs, which is advantageous because of the simple fact that I could fill it up to here or I could fill it up to here and still roll it down and compact all of my gear appropriately. So once you've rolled it down, it has a robust heavy duty clip here and then all of the Hilltop packs come with an over the top clip. I went with a single strap, but you can also get them in a double strap which is uh, ideal for bear canister folks. I'm not a huge materials nerd, to be honest, but this pack is made of Ultra, which is a waterproof material that is ultra lightweight and really durable. But you can also get these packs in Dyneema, which is about the same set of specs, durable, ultra light, etc. This is what I would consider a minimalist pack. In other words, it doesn't have that flip top brain slash lid. It doesn't have any extra pockets other than the water bottle and the mesh pocket. Uh, not tons of bells and whistles, but that the more you backpack, the more you'll discover are just items that add weight and you don't really need. On the front of the pack are the padded uh, shoulder straps. They're really comfortable. Uh, there's a row of daisy chains on either one to put your accessories on. I usually carry a sweat slash snot rag and a water bottle holder on one side. And sometimes I'll clip on my new Apex Giant neck knife. And you may also notice that there's this patch right here. Well, that's where the hip belt goes. And in here is some hardcore heavy duty Velcro. And I will show you how to attach that real quickly. This wears like an actual belt. And why that's important is it just hugs your body better. Most packs will have attachment points. So you're gonna have a gap here in the back, which makes it harder to get it nice and tight and have that pack attached firmly to your body. I love this feature because again, it feels like I'm just wearing a belt. My pack is a prototype. So Ben has made some uh, tweaks in this. Uh, most notably being that he's added to the Velcro. It's more robust. And even with this prototype, I assure you, in lots of elevation, lots of hiking, this belt is going nowhere. So some pack designs do have removable hip belts. And to be honest with you, they're kind of a pain in the ass. This one is super simple. All I've done is copied Ben's direction. He uses this piece of paper. I've just cut out a couple of pieces of cardboard. And what I do is I just hold those loosely on either side of this Velcro to prevent it from sticking when I pull this belt through this sleeve. So this is about a 30 second process, especially once you get good at it. But I literally just take the cardboard like bread in a sandwich and I hold it on over the Velcro, put the strap through this sleeve, pull the hip belt in itself, make sure it's nice and centered remove the cardboard 
smash it down. It is in there really well. Ben has also added some uh, little uh, cordage here that you can attach it for extra leverage, uh, but I'm actually not using it. I don't find it to be necessary because again, this hip belt has gone nowhere when I've worn it. I'll be honest with you, I thought I would always, always use a padded hip belt, but I took this on an overnight last week with about 18 pounds on my back and I removed the darn thing and I was mistaken. It was awesome. And the reason is, I think anything under 20 pounds, I'm cool carrying that on my shoulders and it gives you that freeing feeling and you're not all constricted with that uh, hip belt uh, squeezing your midsection. It was an awesome experience and I'd say about half my trips, especially in summer, I probably won't even use this thing anymore. But it's awfully nice to have a hip belt when you have a load out over 20 pounds or maybe 25 pounds. So I'm definitely gonna keep this around. And again, I'd say it's about a 50-50 on how often I'll use this. Another optional feature that Ben adds to the shoulder straps are load lifters. And much like a frame pack, this is just gonna take the load of your backpack and lift it up and closer to your body. Uh, it's an option, uh, it's a mild upcharge, and I will always recommend that you go with the load lifters. On the bottom of the pack, you can also add a mesh pocket, like a stretchy mesh pocket. Uh, I opted not to do that just because I'm a minimalist, but I think people do like those because they'll put like their snack garbage in it, small items that they might want to access while they're walking. Uh, it's a neat feature, just not for me. So you've seen the front side of my pack. Now let's take a look at the back. So again, on the back, you have a couple of different options. You can go with this open mesh. I chose to do this because it doesn't retain water like the closed mesh, which is still not an issue, but this definitely is gonna drain if I'm in a torrential rain. Whereas that more Lycra stretchy mesh, which is option two, may hold a little bit of water. In addition, I believe that this open mesh, you know, say I have socks or a rain fly or something that's wet in the morning, I can throw it in here and there's gonna be plenty of ventilation to dry it out while I'm hiking. Ben also adds this shock cord. Uh, you could hang things from this if you wanted to. I use it just to kind of uh, close up any load. I usually put my rain jacket, my water filter, basically anything that can possibly get wet in this mesh pocket. And then I can cinch it up so that it's not looking like it's pregnant from one side. On top of both options, Ben uses a elastic strip to uh, just make sure and hold things in from falling out of the top. And on both sides of the pack are these really roomy pockets that are probably most often used for water bottles. Uh, each side will fit two one liter water bottles, so you could potentially carry four liters of water in these. Uh, but I use one in each side for most trips, and then I'll stuff like an umbrella, my tripod, my chair, those types of things in the gap in between, and I usually have room to spare. Uh, they also have a toggle to loosen and tighten the side pockets just in case you're carrying less. And again, just a really simple, clean design. I forgot to mention that it also comes with shock cord on this side of the pack uh, to put a sit pad in, uh, which can also give you more of a flat feeling against your back, but I cut those suckers right off. I don't need them. So that's a pretty quick tour of the pack. So I don't know how this pack feels about me, but I'll tell you, I love this pack. After a couple of outings, I found it to be utterly comfortable and I have an unhealthy obsession with it. It's just amazingly designed, super comfortable, super light, and it's the pack for me. So let's keep it real for a moment here at the end of the video. You can go out and find a lot of backpacks with very similar designs to this one. So why should you choose Hilltop? Point A is the fact that you can customize these backpacks. They have dozens upon dozens of patterns to choose from. You can add your own customized logo. You can add a photo. You can have their graphic designers design a pattern for you. The sky is the limit with what you can do with your pack. Point B, Hilltop is not Osprey or Gregory. They don't pump out 100 backpacks a day. So they take great care in making your gear and their quality control and customer service is second to none. And my final point, point C, is that Hilltop Packs is a small family owned business out of Pennsylvania. It's owned by Ben McMillan. I can testify to the fact that Ben treats all of his staff like family. I mean, heck, he lets kids and dogs come to work. 
but I can assure you that they are great people and they take great care in the quality of the gear that they put out. So I can't say enough good things about Hilltop Packs and why you should choose them for your next backpack. So I'm tired of talking and ready to do some hiking. I hope you take a look at Hilltop. I couldn't be happier with my second Raven and I'm excited to get some miles underneath it. Without further ado, 